Hey, everybody. Grant Miller here. Miami Community Newspapers. I'm with Marketing Monday of Monday Marketing with Misty Butt. God, we got three M's there. Marketing. Monday, eh, Misty. Misty. I mean, magnificent. Okay. What All right. We so want to throw in there? we're going to talk about Twitter. We're going to talk about Twitter today. Okay, but I don't like bringing up politics in your conversation, but I have to. Thank you. The reason oh. Twitter is famous is a oh, well-known is because the president is big on Twitter. Uh, what do you call it, tweeting? Twitter. Tweeting, yeah, tweeting is the right way to say it. So Instead I'm not going to bring up, but it's crazy how it's changed. The marketplace has changed over that because of his tweets. Mm -hmm. People are now doing it. So exactly what is a tweet and how do you get more members? How do you get, so why should your Twitter business Twitter. be on Twitter? Yeah, That's so the what, bottom line. So let's talk about what Twitter is. Tweeting, how Twitter. Other networks, okay. Who should be on it? All that really fun stuff. Sorry, I was looking in the wrong direction, guys. Like, I've never done this before. <laughs> I apologize. So Twitter is its own social network. And the reason we break down social networks by each one, by the way, is because they each are completely different. So if you're going to be on these social networks, you should know how to use each and every one of them completely differently. Um, Twitter is basically, it used to be 140 characters. They have expanded that. But basically, it's very short conversational posts. You can do photos, you can do videos, you can use hashtags, we'll get into all of that. But it's really more of a conversational place um, because people tweet so often. There's your, you'll see your feed when you log in just like you would on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn or wherever else you have a feed. And you'll see what people are posting, right? Those are called tweets. And they're really usually very conversational. People use it a lot to express opinions, to talk about maybe what they're doing during their day. Um, it's it's kind of a, I guess the best way to really describe it is that it's really conversational. But for businesses, what's good to know is there's a pretty wide demographic on there. We're talking probably, um, I've, there's a lot of high school kids in there, especially um, athletes. They use it a lot to connect with schools for recruiting and um, different things like that. But there's, there's a lot of high school kids on it. But it really, it, it goes all the way up, I think, to people um, like in their 50s, obviously above that as well. But that's who it's mainly popular with. Probably like 18 to 50 would be the range. And it's just people talking about um, all different kinds of topics. So they might go in there and they might talk about sports, right? So if you're a really big sports fan, Twitter is an awesome place to go connect with people to talk about it. If you want to talk about politics, any niche topic, really. But if you're a business, you can use this as a customer service tool and to really show a different side of your business, right? Probably a much more lighthearted side, a much more conversational side. So that's sort of the, the gist of um, what Twitter is and maybe why a business should be on it. So, okay. what else you got? The Twitter. Do you use Twitter, by the way? Not really, not much. You know, we're not on much. Facebook, we're on Instagram, we do a little tweeting. Yeah. But it, it, you're on I'm TikTok a, now? On TikTok. You know, not oh, the dance. Excuse me. All oh, right. oh, sorry. It's a, the, the I, dance. I guess. Okay. I so, <laughs> how do I follow people and how do I get people to follow me? On Twitter. On Twitter. Right. So, all right. So, again, just like any other social network, this one, Twitter has actually been around for a long time, um, over 10 years now, and it has evolved just like they all do. Um, Really, the way to connect with people is to participate in these conversations. So if you're, we talk a lot about conversation. Remember the three C's of social media marketing, content, conversation, and consistency. So conversation is really, really important to Twitter because if you just have to go and interact with people. Use hashtags, use other um, trending topics, Twitter lists trending topics, so you can participate in those conversations as well and talk about things that that matter and then when you do that you're not just sending out tweets with information like hey buy from me or um, read this or do this or do that you're using it as a much more approachable being really interactive uh, post so someone might say hey you know I'm gonna go try this wine tonight and you might say oh okay great or I'm looking for a restaurant in downtown and maybe you're a restaurant in downtown and you have um, a keywords or searches set up to alert you when someone uses those terms and you can say hey come try us out we'll give you a free appetizer for example so um, just really being very present and conversational it's it's so confusing <laughs> you got Twitter you have Twitter. That's on your phone. Mm -hmm. You got Facebook on your phone. Mm -hmm. You got Instagram on your phone. Yes. You got emails on your phone. Yes. So why would Twitter be better, any better than anything else? So when you're trying to figure out which um, which 
networks to join, you have to really figure out what's going to, as an individual and as a business, figure out what like what do you what do you like first of all as a business you want to know where your audience is we talked a lot about that so asking them what social networks are you using just ask that question a lot of businesses don't ask that question just like put it out like a survey text some people find out but if you're as an individual um when you it's really about just finding out what that you what you like to use the most some people prefer twitter over instagram or maybe they prefer instagram and twitter over some of the other networks so i might have um, a social media account on, let's say, five places. So I might have Pinterest, I might have LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, which by the way I do, I have all these things, but there's ones that I'm gonna spend more time on just because I only on have one, so much hold time. On, hold on one uh -oh. sec, we're gonna have fun. Uh-oh. Jennifer, Grant, you're on live with Marketing Monday. Jennifer Gerson <gasps> is on Hi, <laughs> welcome to the show. Well, we have a caller. Thank you, thank you for calling in. <laughs> How can I help? I'm returning your say, email. Yes. You're on live. Say, Be careful what you say. But go I'm ahead. Really? Yes. <laughs> we'll see you. When are we going to see you? Want to email Tommy any information? Yeah, because you called um, Pam and rescheduled. Things. Just call me back when you're not live. Okay. You got it, Jennifer. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right. Aye, aye. Until. Um... Okay. We so. Live callers. What? You say? I love it. Live callers. Live call. Live call. Yeah, it's so overwhelming. What to, what to market? Why should I go on Twitter? Right. Not on. Yeah, I I think you got to do a little of everything, right? You can, but I think if you're going to be spread really thin, you put yourself at a disadvantage if you're not paying attention to it. So if you are not yourself or you haven't hired somebody to stay on top of these things for you, you don't want to spread yourself too thin. You really want to commit to what you can realistically interact with because let's say – um, that you have time to really pay attention to Facebook and Twitter every day, but you don't really have time to really pay attention to, um, you know, some of these other networks, then that's okay. It doesn't mean you have to be on there, but if you're going to be on there, be active. So when you're sort of choosing that, don't feel like you have to choose everything and be everywhere. People have this fear that they're going to miss out on business, but really the way that you're going to miss out on opportunity is if you're not being present. And you can't be present if you're spread too thin. So you so really do, either make it a plan you can do or hire somebody who okay, can. Okay, so you, you're, I'm on your tweet. So when yeah. I go to Twitter, uh -huh. your thing pops up on my feed, correct? Yeah. If you're following me, yes. Wow. Okay. <laughs> follow, follow, by the way, is the same thing as having a friend on um, Facebook or following on Instagram oh. or okay, who Who should you follow on Twitter? Yeah, that's a that's a preference, right? That's totally a preference. It depends what you're, what you are into. If you're talking about as you as an individual, follow the things that you're interested in and the people that talk about things that you're interested in, um, which you can find through hashtags. Um, you'll see actually as you start to follow people, Twitter's algorithm will show you tweets from people that you don't follow, but they think maybe you'll like this because your friends have interacted with this tweet. So. Sometimes I'll be like, I don't follow that person, but then I'll see, oh, so and so and so and so like this tweet or retweeted this tweet, and so that's how I end up seeing it. Um, everything comes back to those stupid algorithms, right? <laughs> and ads, and oh my god, all those things. Um, so, as a business owner, I know you said, but let's go over here. What should I promote? Let's say I am a uh, a lawyer. Mm -hmm. What What should I use on the tweet Twitter, Twitter, so, or Twitter? Twi Twitter. <laughs> Let's be very careful with it. <laughs> our pronunciation, Twitter. Yeah. So um, if you are a law firm, you can do a variety of different things. You want, again, you want to be present, you want to be active, and you want to be conversational. So your tone on Twitter may not be um, as corporate, for example, as it is on LinkedIn, where you may be on LinkedIn, you're giving very specific um business tips or like let's say like you're a business attorney and you're giving tips specific about incorporating businesses or contracts or stuff like or the PPP loan or stuff like that that people on, in, on LinkedIn are there to look for. On Twitter, you might be a little bit more conversational about it, right? It might have the same content, but you're saying things in a different um, way, more, more like how you would actually speak to people. So um, I'll give like a really, so there, there's, um, there are a lot of firms out there that do like really, they'll do really funny, like behind the scenes. They can be a little snarky. Twitter's known for, I think, for being it, a little bit more snarky. It's just words, right? Or is it, it can be video too? It can be video too. 
but people mostly use it just to read very short snippets so this, this, i don't think people watch a lot of video i don't have the stats on it but i don't think they watch a lot of video on twitter i don't think they're you know and how did trump that. get so many followers well i mean he is the president of the united states so he sort of like just assumes that account and um and people you know want to see what he has to say all right we went over the demographics used to be younger twitter i think it's got older it's getting yeah it's it's pretty it is pretty diverse it is pretty the latest numbers are really show uh, they start around 18 and up to around 50 but i know people that are above that age range that use it actively so people are in business that use it yes. a lot how do you use twitter for customer service oh yeah great question so um if you'll notice like when people have something to complain about so um, like very often for instance um, like a cell phone company or an airline company they take to Twitter to be like hey um, I've been trying to contact our customer service I'm getting an awful deal people are saying this my bill is wrong nobody can help me blah 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 and then the, the people that are paying attention to those major brands to their customer service are paying attention to that and you're gonna get a response pretty quickly so um, actually, a lot of these big brands even have Twitter handles or Twitter accounts just for customer service issues, just to use it as a place to come to have conversations with people. So that's a really good thing if you're a brand and you're paying attention to what people are saying about you. Again, you can set up alerts and you can set up um, searches just for your business name or something like your business or a product or whatever it is, the service. You can use that and basically listen to people having those conversations and when you see a tweet that is relevant you have an opportunity to respond to it and, and so it, it is a really strong customer service tool because it is so conversational should i link my twitter to my other social media and what's the advantage what's the disadvantage <clears throat> like linking it so i never advise i know a lot of people do this they'll have they'll sign up for um one account like let's say I have my Instagram and that's what I mainly use. Right. And then I have my Instagram, whenever I post something there, I have it, the, the tabs turned on so that it automatically goes to Facebook and it automatically goes into Twitter and all these different places. Isn't that good? I advise against that. And oh. I'm gonna tell you why. Uh, because every single network is its own beast. And so what works for hashtags and formatting and all that on Instagram is not going to work since we're using Twitter. Twitter as an example. Hashtags that are popular on Instagram are not the same po hashtags that are necessarily popular on Twitter. So you might have like a national day, like I don't know, national puppy day. So the one that's trending on Twitter might be different than the one that's trending on Instagram, right? So you really right. want to pay attention to that. Secondly, um, it, people use tend to use longer form posts on Instagram. So if I have that automatically go to Twitter, it's going to get cut off. It's not going to have the same effectiveness. It's just going to be a link, really, like a few words in a link, and um, it's not. It's just not going to do a nice job. All right. So we have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. <laughs> How many times should I tweet? You know, if I'm Donald Trump, I tweet. 10 times a yeah, day. Yeah, I tweet every five minutes. Okay, how many, if, if a retail business, how many times should I tweet in a day? Yeah, um, retail business. So, again, I think it depends. You want to be relevant with your tweets, like what's, you know, like what's going on. So, um, and then because it's conversational and everything moves much quicker, you want to post probably four to five times a day. And that can include, by the way, um, interacting with other posts. So doing um, what's called a retweet, which is where you share something that somebody has tweeted. And you can do that um, with a comment. So let's say somebody posts something and like you want to comment on that. So maybe I'm a retail store and I'm a, um, a boutique and I sell, um, I don't know, whatever it is that you sell at your boutique. If there's something trending around that, you may want to retweet it. Maybe there's a celebrity who's posted something and they're wearing something that you offer in your shop. You can retweet that. So again, just like being active. Okay, what's, what's your feeling, the best type of business you should be tweeting? I mean, is there a certain business, like do restaurants tweet? Mm -hmm. Restaurants tweet. A lot. Yeah, they do. I mean, restaurants are, are uh, they use a lot of Instagram because of the visual aspect of it. So it's, you know, a restaurant is very, it can be very visual. But it could also be, you know, a customer service opportunities there as well, um, where if somebody has a bad experience and they're tweeting, hey, I had a bad experience, or on the other side, I had a good experience, it gives you that opportunity 
to respond. You can also say, let's say you have a daily special or you want to remind people of your happy hours. Um, those are those are good things that you can do also on Twitter. And you can, like, let's say um, that I'm in Brickell and I want to connect with people in Brickell. So then what am I doing? Now I'm looking for people who are in Brickell or tweeting about Brickell. How do you Brickle do that? How do you look for people on Twitter? You, it's not, you can't look for people on Twitter. It's whoever's on your, on your subscribes to you. Well, Is it you hard? Can, there's search features that you can use. Now, how do I get you to follow my Twitter? Um, you can ask me. <laughs> but, but you, have you have to ask. You have to ask. No, I mean, you don't have to, but I mean, it, there's, that's definitely one of the tactics. So I think it's always about, again, it's about content. So if I'm putting out content that's really interesting and relevant to my audience and I have that down pat, then they're probably going to want to follow me, right? Because they're going to know what to expect and that I'm posting something that's of interest to them. So going back to the restaurant example, if I'm a restaurant in, in, in a certain area and I'm tweeting about things going on in that area or I'm tweeting about um, events that are going on that I'm having in that area, maybe not right now, that's not the best ex um, example, but stuff like that that you're, that you're staying relevant, people are gonna pay attention to you for that for. Now, um, if you're, example, a real estate agent, right? So how do, well, how, why would a real estate agent use Twitter? Again, it has to be really conversational. So if you're just posting, hey, come to my open house all the time, you're probably not gonna get as much traction as if you were doing something that had a little bit more um, intriguing, right? So maybe it's, maybe you're doing polls about different things that are going on. Maybe you're doing, um, you can live stream to Twitter using different tools. Maybe you're, um, it, it's really it's really getting creative and again being present and and interacting with with people so again if i'm a realtor i might say okay i'm going to follow the village of pinecrest as an example if pinecrest is one of my farming areas as they say in real estate farming yeah. everywhere is farming well uh, i mean you well yeah okay <laughs> it's not supposed to be so how do, really I find, how do i find how do i find my target audience oh, on twitter yeah um well again i think think about where your target, again, it's always good to ask the questions, but think too about where are, what are their interests, right? Like what else are they, are they interested in? You guys might say, okay, my people, they're gonna be interested in all kinds of different things, right? So they might be interested in, um, I don't know, the different restaurants that you have been to and visited, right? So maybe um, they have, uh, I'm forgetting the name of that Italian restaurant on 128th. Ah. Anna drawing Capri. a blank on it. Anna Capri. So let's say they were using Twitter. I don't know if they are, but let's say that they are, and you're, um, in a, you know, you're interacting with them, and you're seeing who's interacting with with Anna Capri. For you, as the community newspapers, those might be good people for you to follow because you know they're active and they're in the community. You might check out who's following and um, interacting with the Village of Pinecrest. You might do that for all the municipalities and cities and all that kind of stuff. Gotcha. Hashtags. Yeah. Are they some people say they're relevant on Instagram, this and that. Are they relevant on Twitter? So they used to be extremely relevant on Twitter. So Twitter used to be you would put like six hashtags in your tweet and you were good to go. Um, but what does hashtags do? Hashtag is a search feature. Essentially, that's all it is. So remember we said Twitter is about conversation. So let's say that I want to have a conversation about a specific uh, topic. Then I'll hashtag that. Uh, really, really, the best example I can give you is people will have um, live Twitter conversations. So they'll say they'll set up an event for their company and they'll say, we're going to go live on Twitter and we're going to do a Q&A um, about this. But to participate or let's say I'm having a convention or I'm doing a seminar or a live workshop and I'll say, OK, you want to participate in this live, then I want you to um, go to Twitter and use this hashtag specifically for this event. Now the key with hashtags, if you're doing that, is make sure nobody else is using that hashtag for something else, because then you're gonna sort of cross lines in the conversation gotcha. that you're having. But you tell people, okay, go to hashtag event ABC123, and now you can just follow the stream, you follow the stream of that hashtag of anybody who's using it. And whether you're following them or not, anytime anyone uses that hashtag, now you're gonna see the tweet. Gotcha. All right, this week we talked about Twitter. Last week we talked about what? Last week I had a guest where we spoke about. Um, oh, you kicked me off. That's right. <laughs> I kicked you off. Okay, so you had face. We've done Facebook, we've done Facebook, we did we've done, Instagram, yes, Instagram, we've done LinkedIn, LinkedIn, and what are we going to talk about next week? So next week you're going to have a guest. I have a guest coming. I have a few guests lined up who, over the who next are they? few weeks. So next week we have Jackie Larkin, who's the marketing director for NAI, NAI Miami. She's going to talk to us about commercial real estate marketing. Um, so she's awesome. I don't know if you've had a chance to meet her before, but she's. I coach your brother. 
Oh, really? Yeah. So she, we, we've go, she's been on plenty of baseball trips that, that she's sick funny. of. That's funny. So you know everybody. And you really yeah. know everybody. Okay. And then the we <laughs> that's crazy. And, the and we NAIA, them. it's a great story. Yeah. Because they've built this this little company. It used to be Larkin Schmidt. Into, then it got into NIA, one of the biggest commercial people in the in Southeast United States. So hats off to those guys. Yeah. And they couldn't actually be nicer or more professional. Like Absolutely. They're, they're awesome. So um, I'm really excited to bring her on. And then the week after, we have Ivan Mildenovich. I always pronounce his name wrong, so hopefully I got it's that right. Just Ivan. Just, just the Ivan. Everybody and it's, it's know interesting about Ivan. He's built one of the strongest IT, is it IT, as yes. you call it, in, around. It's, and what's great about it, he, he worships his parents. He talks about what they did with him. Yeah. So be excited for both his, his marketing mind is amazing, and how he tests and measure things is is really is really awesome. He has such a strong understanding of SEO and landing pages and internet ads and how all those things make them talk to each other. He's super super smart. Well, like that. you know, more interesting is his baby. Just had a baby, boy or girl? Girl. Girl has brought him down. Now he's changing diapers. He's, oh, yeah. He's, if you follow him, you see all that now, right? Right, right. So I'm excited for him. All yeah. right, so next week, Misty Buck, Marketing Monday yes. with Misty. Yes. MMM. Everybody, this is Grant Miller. Have a great day. Thank you. Bam.